my many years as a facilitator, I have always seen a gap in this particular aspect and I thought it is one of the best things to begin with. Welcome to Shiksha Sarthi. Today, we will talk about the importance of understanding the developmental milestones, the learning objectives and the learning outcomes and why is it essential for teachers and parents to know about them. In my many years as a facilitator, I have always seen a gap in this particular aspect and I thought it is one of the best things to begin with. Once we have a clear understanding, it is so easy to build on it. So developmental learning milestones must be the beginning of what we all have to set for our children. So milestones are things that most children can do by a certain age. Learning objectives are those indicators, clear and concise statements that describe what you intend to do with your children by the end of a course or a time period. And learning objectives and learning outcomes are many times confused. So learning objective describes an intended state what you hope the children will learn and the learning outcome is what you observe presently what your children actually learn. To have realistic expectations, learning outcome charts must be understood and internalized. I have been teaching for so many years and I still feel the need to keep reading them before I design work for children. So what should you be doing? You should go to a wonderful document called Nipun. It's a good beginning for teachers to plan how to observe and how to, you know, manage your classrooms. So it's go to NX Chair 1 of the National Initiative for Proficiency in Reading with understanding and numeracy that shows three clear developmental goals which have learning outcomes from the age group of three to nine that is preschool one two and three nursery lower kindergarten and upper kindergarten class one or balvatika and classes two and three so what should you do print it keep it handy it's a great start because you can keep telling you can keep referring, you can keep marking what you're doing in the classroom with the developmental outcomes and see if it is actually becoming a part of your classroom design and your children reactions and what they are experiencing at that particular point. So developmental goal one says children maintain good health and well-being. So all the outcomes are very clearly labeled there for us, telling us that both the physical and mental well-being is very important. Developmental goal two, children become effective communicators. That means children are able to absorb language, they're able to have a vocabulary and use language effectively in their day-to-day -day environment. Developmental goal three, children become involved learners and connect with their immediate environment. That means they are able to apply what they have learnt. Like we said, we must know the learning outcomes across the foundation as children can be one step ahead or yet to reach that particular learning level. So if you have an understanding of the entire foundation, then you can help both the gifted children as well as those who need more nurturing and care and are yet to become independent and reach a particular learning level. So this should be the beginning of our awareness and how we are going to take things forward. Because the most useful learning outcomes are specific and measurable and will help you to set the pace of your classrooms. Observe the children in a realistic way without labeling them and internalizing it to understand it and apply it better. We all must remember 
This space at the foundation is the fastest space of the brain development. 80% of the child's brain is developing at this level. So our understanding of every aspect will just make it better. To understand that children develop in stages and the sequence of the stages follows a generally predictable pattern. To understand that children develop at a different pace and sometimes it's uneven. Some children will develop in some areas faster than the others. So once we understand and we have the charts with us, we know what we are observing. It will just become very easy to understand it is just a pace of learning. To understand that learning by doing, moving has to move from concrete to abstract and for which the correct age appropriate activities need to be planned. So if we have a clear understanding, we will plan better. Also to understand that learning cannot be hurried and repeated practice is needed in a variety of ways to pace up the learning. Our understanding will definitely help to create the space of learning abilities and skills for each child at each level. For us to understand that developmental milestones, learning outcomes act as a reference for setting our classroom at a comfortable pace, taking all the children along. Also for us to understand that intellectual development of the children is so closely related to their comfort level, to the social emotional stability and the happiness of the children. So it's very important to keep a document ready with you, to be able to read it, understand what kind of things we have to observe and most importantly, what have we got to give the children to actually reach that particular learning outcome. So if we can begin with this, I think it would be really, really useful for all of us. And this is going to take time to understand. Each one of us will have to work and internalize our processes. The next episode, we are going to talk about the developmental domains, all the activities that you need in each developmental domain to actually help the children reach that particular milestone and create a happy learning environment for the children. So I do hope that our episode will be useful for you and I would love to get the feedback and understand what more we need to do to continue this wonderful journey together. So thank you so much and have a good day. Bye-bye. Square, square, panda.